Peace to the 12. I guess I'll like probably make this series like a playlist or something about like the 12, call it like the 12 tribes discovered or the 12 tribes documented or the lost tribes documented, something like that. I don't know. But anyway, y'all see the title of the video. This Jewish rabbi called Native Americans Israelites. Who is this Jewish rabbi? It's going to be a quick video too. So it ain't going to be too long. Uh, who is this so-called so -called Jewish rabbi? Who is this? This is Manasseh ben Israel. Okay? Or Manasseh ben Israel. He was a Sephardic rabbi of Amsterdam. He was born in 1604 and he died in 1657. So he didn't really live very long. But he he agreed that uh, the inhabitants of the Americas were Israelites. Okay, that's the point of the video. All right. So the book we're going to be reading on, and this is actually a side story of uh, what I was working on. I was working on a documentary on the tribe of Issachar, but I found this and I decided to make a quick video. Because I haven't uploaded in a couple of days. Even though my last video got um, taken down. <laughs> and I got a uh, community guidelines warning. But anyway. This is the book we're going to be uh, reading from. Origins of the American Indians. European Concerts. 1492-1729 to by Lee Eldridge Huddleston. But this book is going to be quoting from the book. That this guy wrote. Manessa Ben Israel. Which is. The Hope of Israel. By Manessa ben Israel. He wrote this book in 1650. And it was translated to English in 1652. Okay. And this also proves. Because I see a lot of trolls in the comments. They're like. Oh you talk about Native Americans or Israelites. What are you a Mormon or something? For I have you know. Mormonism came out in 1830. Um, and this is in 1650. So before that. Anyways. Let's go and get the excerpt. And I got like two scriptures after that. I'm just going to read the highlighted portion. Y'all know how I do it. I'm going to read the highlighted portion for sake of time. So we're going to go to page 130 of this book, Origins of the American Indians, European Concerts, 1492-1729. He states, Manessa began to make a connection between the supposed discovery of the lost tribes of Israel in America and his own messianic traditions did not. The scriptures indicate that the Messiah could not come until the dispersion of Israel was completed. Thus, when Manasseh's book appeared in 1650, it bore the Latin title, um, not even going to try to pronounce that, Spas Israelitis, The Hope of Israel. All right. Now we're going to go to this page, page 131, highlighted portion. Manasseh was the first Jew to write a study concerning the origins of the American Indians. And apparently one of the first used to accept the Jewish origin theory. His arguments were largely a rehash of the older writings of the Lost Tribes theory. He admitted as he had previous commenta commentators that the problem of discovering origins posed many difficulties. Um, he concluded that those Spaniards who inhabited the Indies generally regarded the Indians as descendants of Jews and that they were correct. See that? So he says the Spaniards in general thought that the Indians were Israelites. According to Manessa's version of the Lost Tribes theory, the Israelites got to the New World first, but late coming Gentiles drove them into the mountains. He concluded with the reasons which compelled him in belief in, um, him to believe the discovery of the lost tribes in America signalized that the day of redemption for Israel was near. All right. So let's deal with this lost tribes thing first. What is he quoting or what are they talking about? Well, well, I mean, you read about that happening in the uh, in the Chronicles as well. But we're going to get second Ezra's the Apocrypha, which was originally part of the King James Bible. We're going to get 2nd Ezra chapter 13 and verse 40 to 45. Those are the 10 tribes which were carried away cap which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king 
whom Salmazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country, where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. For the most high then showed signs for them, and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same region is called Arsareth. Now let's get this pink portion, and then we'll get the next scripture. Then we'll go ahead and get up out of here. Same page 131. Manasseh concluded that the Indies were anciently inhabited by part of the ten tribes who came via the Straits of Anayan, and some of whom still lived hidden in unknown parts of America. That not all the ten tribes came to the New World. That's his opinion. Not all the ten tribes came to the New World. But that some dispersed to other parts of the world. That they did not return to the second temple. That to this day the lost tribes kept the Jewish religion. That the prophecies of their region. Or excuse me. That the prophecies of their return to their own land would be fulfilled. That they would return to Jerusalem. That the twelve tribes would be united. All right. The twelve tribes. And the twelve tribes will be united according to scriptures. That's Isaiah, or excuse me, that's Ezekiel 37 and uh, 22 is what I want, but we're going to actually start at 16. Ezekiel 37 and 16. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel companions. One stick is for the house of Judah, the southern kingdom. The other stick is for Ephraim, the northern kingdom, the house of Israel, his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with them, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks... Whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into the two kingdoms any more at all. So, when all things are said and done, there won't be a southern and northern kingdom because we're all going to be we're all going to be joined together. All right, so he was correct in that assessment. Um, that's pretty much it on that. It ain't gonna be too long. Once again, this Jewish rabbi called Native Americans Israelites. And with that, I say peace to the twelve. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the heavenly Father, the Most High Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the heavenly Father who is commonly known as God, and Yahweh Shai is the Savior of the nation of Israel. Who is commonly known as Jesus Christ? I want to say shallow on, which means peace. You people listening, learning, you brothers doing this work, truth, truth and sincerity. And to you elders that's been doing this thing before me, man. I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. Go on. Shalom.